Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to share how to grow your property portfolio. For so many property investors, the dream of building wealth and financial freedom is the driver behind building a great property portfolio. Okay, While starting in property is relatively easy, many investors tend to struggle Right, once they've got their first and second properties, some once they've got their 10 properties and they find the growth very, 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 very slow and their portfolio become really, really slow and, and stressful only because they haven't systemized it and they haven't, they did not know how to take advantage of what they've already have and they really, really struggle and it doesn't have to, and, and, and they then struggle and they don't wanna do properties anymore. It doesn't have to be that way, okay? In this video, I'm going to share how you could grow your property portfolio efficiently in a way that you don't have to worry about the property being rented or being stressful and all that sort of thing, okay? So before we get going, if you like this video or any of my videos, don't forget to hit the like button below, subscribe to my YouTube channel for more of these amazing tutorials. In this video, I'm going to share nine steps to grow and scale your property portfolio. The number one thing you need to think about, basically, you need to identify your goal. Do you want properties to be passive income, addition to your salary? How many do you want to buy? Are you looking for rental income or capital ap appreciation? Or do you want to have as many rented properties as possible? Right, it could be both. If you can advise, it, 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 it could be both. But some people don't really want property to be their business. They just want property to be a steady stream of income that will generate the money whilst they sleep. If you're, if you're one of those people, again, at the outset, you have to know, or it's important for you to identify that's your goal, that's what you want to achieve. You don't want property to, to, to be your um, sort of a side business or a business. You just want it to grow automatically, to be able to look after themselves, so it, gener it generates a handsome return on investment. Understanding the route you take to build your property portfolio is very, very useful and it's also important to you. And it would help you create a long-term objective as well as long-term plan and obviously reduces the stress or, or, or the mistakes you would make and then it makes investing in property a joy. Investing in property becomes something that, that, that you're really passionate about and it's something that you are really, really happy about. So very important for you to know what your goals are before you start your property investment journey. The second thing we need to do basically is to do our due diligence and research in our investment area. We need, need to know the market trend in our area, right? The tenant types, what sort of tenants that may take on our property. We can speak to two or three agents to find out about the area, the tenant type, and what are the rent prices in, the, in, the, in that area. And also whether there has been an increase in rent in that area, because it's very important. You, will, you can tell whether price, rent, rent prices has gone up by asking the agent or going online, looking at Rhyme Uber, Zoopla to understand whether prices has gone up um, recently in that area. It's important also for you to join landlord, um, join, join landlord forums in your investment area, right? Or property investment um, groups so that you would learn about the trend and what's happening in your investment area and also what's happening in the future, in your future investment areas. That way then you would know what you're getting into. You're not going in blind. So it's very important for you to be able to do this due diligence and your, and your research to actually allow you to actually stipulate or narrow down what sort of properties you're going to buy, how you can renovate it with that, with, with that research. Number three, know your cash flow. Very important, I've been repeating this over and over. You have to know your cash flow, okay? Very important, how much profit are you likely to achieve in a property? Or less likely to achieve in a property? And what's your minimum cash flow do you accept for a property to be a good deal for you? There's so many property investors out there, when I ask them, what's your minimum cash flow for, for, for a deal to be a good deal? They don't know. They literally don't know. They don't know. They just, oh, I just want a property generating me cash flow. But they haven't got a baseline and they haven't got, a, they haven't got an objective, okay? So if, you say, if you're an investor, you need to know that cash flow. You need to know how much are you really expecting to generate in a property, in a buy-to-let property minimum before that investment becomes a sound investment. Important for you to know your rental coverage, which is 125% one, 
and 135 percent for personal and company respectively so you need to know what they are so then you can you can engage how much rent you need to do to be able to you need to get to be able to cover your um your um interest payments very important for you to know what these are and also important for you to factor in voids repair and maintenance so you need to be in, in, in figuring out how much this may cost you so you would know whether you would hit that minimum um net profit per per property because you need to know how much you're investing how much cash flow you're getting and what your net profit or your net cash flow would be before you buy any property or before you even venture to invest in an investment area okay number four you need to have a great power team you have to have an expert team people that you work with listen property is people's um it, it's a people's game you how you need to you how you need to have people to work with you to allow you to buy these properties um, and also get you to do what you're supposed to do with these properties. Just accept that you cannot simply do it on your own. You need people like solicitors, mortgage brokers, tradesmen, accountants, agents, sources, mentors, coaches. You need these people to, to allow you to progress swiftly to buying properties without having massive mistakes or, or, or regrets. Again, if this video is making sense, don't forget to, to um, hit the share, share, share button to um, share it with friends and families that, that you think may be interested um, in investing in properties. Number five, get some education. Educate yourself. With good education, you will know the right deal, right? And what due diligence is needed for any sort of deals that they present to you. So without the right education, you, you, are, you are going in blind. And also you would, with, with the right education, you'll be able to know how, how to raise finances, how to do a renovation project, or whether you need a mentor or a coach to actually help you um, do that work for you. Whether you invest in a mentor or you attend regular property investment training event, either virtually or, or anyhow you want to do it. It's vitally important to keep expanding your knowledge, learn as much as possible about the industry. Even if you've already started your property investment journey, get someone to guide you, get someone to be your accountability partner, someone who's experienced more than you do, that would help you make some decisions that are very difficult to make especially decisions that would cost you significant amount of money to be able to get the thing done. So obviously you want to reduce the risk of making mistakes by having that mentor who would advise you and guide you along the way to ensure you don't make that mistake. The more you know, the better you are basically. And what I've learned in properties also is cheaper to pay for your education than it is to pay for your mistakes. So always educate yourself, get someone to mentor you, guide you, be in the market, right? What do I mean by that? Communicate with people, join property forums, property events, know what's happening in the property market, do your due diligence, do your research, educate yourself, get a newsletter so you understand what's happening out there. That way you will be able to make informed and experienced decisions. Number seven, have an offer strategy, right? When you're approaching sellers, right? Try to find out why they're selling their properties right why they're selling what's the reason they really want to sell whether they want a quick sell or they don't really mind to wait along again knowing these things would help you buy properties at low price and also will able to hedge to buy properties in some time in in the future and also buy properties at a very 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 sort of discounted rate again you have to have that offer strategy have that strategy in mind so that you will tailor your your offer based on the seller's um, objectives number eight stay on top of your credit score okay don't start investing and forget about your credit score check your check your credit score using Experian or whichever platform you want to use they have Experian they have clear score they have different different so, sort of credit rating um, uh, um, companies so keep an eye on it right if you have to do it weekly do it weekly if you have to check it monthly make sure you do it and then obviously if you have not been if your credit is not good to get yourself a credit card that will boost your credit rating again obviously use the credit card but then pay back end of the month pay all of it by the end of the month that would also help you boost your credit score and the lenders would see as a reliable person 
who is able to actually lend and pay back. And again, if you haven't re re registered in the um, electoral roll, phone your council or go online, re register yourself to vote. And that way you will be in the electoral register. That also tells the lenders that you're a permanent person. You're going to stay for in one address for a, for a very long time. And then that way then they would have that reassurance to be able to um, lend you money okay review your credit card review your credit score in a monthly basis or weekly basis if you have a low credit score again use the credit card as frequently as possible if you to buy a chocolate bar use it because obviously you get point based transaction it's not based on how much money you 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 spend it's based on transactions so use it and then make sure you pay it by the end of the month okay number nine Choose your tenant wisely, okay? I cannot emphasize how important it is to actually know the sort of tenants that are moving into your property, okay? You need to know your tenant type. You need to, know reg you need to do rigorous referencing, okay? You have to get the references done, okay? Don't do shortcuts. Don't say, oh, listen, I can rent my property myself. I can do all that legwork. No, if it costs you to pay an agent 50% of your first month rent to do your proper referencing, for your prospective tenant, it, it's worth the investment. I will tell you that now, it's worth the investment. The worst thing that could happen to you is to get a tenant in your property that does not pay you rent. Especially now the government is changing the law that then restricts you even from evicting the tenant, right? So in Wales right now, for you to be able to evict the tenant, you'd have to give them six month notice. And again, guess what? Once you've given them six month notice, most of the tenant will not be paying you rent during that during that six month. That's six months worth of rent. So vitally important for you to do the referencing properly and rigorously to ensure that your investment is protected. OK, I know some people get excited. Oh, it's a friend of mine. It's a family friend. Don't do it. OK, even if it's your mom. Right. If your mom is moving in your house, make sure you you do your referencing with her okay that is the worst you could get basically so i'm just explaining to you how important it is for you to do your for you to do your referencing and also to ensure that you've got the right tenant for the property once the tenants have moved in it's important for you to build relationship with them right be friendly to be friendly to them professional friendliness obviously so that when there's an issue they will communicate it with you effectively so they're not going to wait until it becomes worse before they let you know because what you don't want is to wait until the problem becomes bigger before you know. So if you're one of those landlords who wants to know, who doesn't want to know anything with your property, you need to stop that now. You need to know whatever is happening with your property to ensure that that property is being maintained adequately because you don't want to go for five, ten thousand pounds renovation, um, repairs work, okay? Whatever tiny thing happens, tell the tenant, whatever happens tiny to let you know. Once they've let you know, you will be able to resolve that problem because before it becomes a massive issue. Make sure the property is safe and also is fully compliant as well, especially if you're doing buy to let, make sure you're, you are fully compliant to ensure that the, the tenants are safe in the property. Number 10, finally, don't lose sight of your ultimate goal. Prepare to be, to be flexible, keep an eye on the, on the market so you know what's happening, for example, if inflation is going up, you need to know by how much you need to increase your rent by. Whatever is happening in the market, make sure you are you are relevant and you know what's happening out there so that you could adjust and be flexible in your property investment journey. Ask yourself about your long-term goals. Do you really want to sell all these properties um, in certain amount of years or you really want to keep these properties for your entire generation again you have to know these things because when you invest in you invest that we invest with that mindset okay so that you know then what your exit strategy is if you're looking to be if you're looking for a steady income for example be it make it a steady income or if you maybe want to do properties as a job again that would also help you strategize wisely to be able to see what sort of properties you need to buy to be able to replace your salary right so you can go into the full time and your exit strategy is very very important you need to know whether you intend to sell your investment strategies in the future or you or you are holding them for your children or for your great great grandchildren whatever whatever it may be so you need to determine that upfront to ensure that you know what you're doing and what your exit strategies are before you even start investing by the way you need to know what your end goal is 
right? You need to know what your strategy is, what your exit strategy is before you even start investing. Again, vitally, vitally important for you to be able to take that action before you start investing. I really hope this video has been helpful. If this video has, has been helpful, click the link below to um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also don't forget to, to um, hit, the, hit the like button and share the videos to friends and family. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to sharing the next video.